Today I am going to demonstrate how to add a scanning laser rangefinder onto your $50 robot. First thing you do is take your servo. Uh, this is a non-modified servo and you rotate it to both ends until you locate the center of the servo. So make sure that the servo is centered along this axis here. Then what you do is you have a piece of velcro. I'm going to do this in a very ghetto way. Normally you should do a very nice metallic mounting. If I could get this velcro off here. Normally you should do a nice mounting for your infrared servo. But today I'm just going to do it very ghetto. So I put on a sheet of velcro there. And then I have my other piece of velcro here. And I'm going to attach it on to the bottom of your sharp infrared range finder. And then we place it right on top like that. This is pretty ghetto. But now you have a infrared range finder on your servo mounted. Now you have your $50 robot. Uh, yours probably does not look like this. It probably looks a lot better than mine. But we take the servo, we plug it in to the third digital output pin. Your microcontroller should have quite a few digital output pins. And so the first two are, of course, the left motor, the right motor, and then the third one's now your scanning digital output. Now, your sharp IR rangefinder is an analog sensor, and so you want to plug it into an analog output right next to your photo sensor analog outputs. So it's plugged in like that, and tuck away your control board. Now mine's just really, really ghetto. And somehow my other board will fit. This is definitely ad hoc. I just figured this out as I'm making the video. So now it's on there. Now, as you can see, it's a huge wiring mess. And so what I like to do with my wires all the time is to get a twist tie and twist tie it on really fast just so the wires are out of the way and not as ghetto as my robot basically looks. So there you have it. Your $50 robot now has a scanning sharp IR on it. Okay I have just uploaded the program to the robot. Now before we turn it on we need to calibrate the sensor. So to calibrate it we need an object like this candy box here. And so you put the object in front of the sensor, in front of the robot so we can see. And so the sensor now sees the object and the calibration what it's doing is measuring that distance and saying anything in between this distance the robot will chase. If it's behind that object, if it's further behind, then it'll just ignore that object completely. So we have the object in front, the sensor is pointing at the object, and now we turn it on. So as soon as it turns it on, it calibrates. Then there's a two second delay, and then it works. So now you can see the sensor, and it sort of sees the object. There it goes. I don't know if you can see it. So it sees the object, and the wheels are changing directions as it moves. Now to better see it, I'm going to run it on the floor. Alright, so we have the robot. We have the calibration object. The sensor is pointing at the calibration object. So then we turn it on. It calibrates, delays two seconds, and then it'll follow the object, as you can see. And it'll spin around if it doesn't see the object. Alright. There it goes. Now you have your robot chasing stuff.
Now we have the robot set up. The sensor is pointing at the object. So the first thing that happens when we turn it on, it calibrates. It takes two seconds to calibrate and then it goes for the object. Or it spins around like crazy and this doesn't work. 